It's working. Yay. Terrific, terrific. Give everybody a moment to open that virtual sanctuary door. Sure. And come on in and join us. We are delighted today because we have Senior Rabbi Ari Sunshine with us from Congregation Cherith Israel. Thank you so much for being here, Rabbi Sunshine. Thank you, Debbie and Barry. Glad to be uh, invited to be able to be on the Shabbos show. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Exciting. <laughs> Um, and I know we have a day, like we usually do, chock full of things about ritual and prayer and customs and ideas and things that begin to put us in the mood for Shabbos so that we don't just sit down on our couch and turn on live stream and go, okay, we have a little bit of a sacred segue here. So um, I, I guess with that, Barry, do you have anything? Well... To begin with, um, Rabbi Sunshine, Sheriff Israel, um, it's close to my heart. Because as it turns out, I'm sorry about the yellow paper. <laughs> but That just is, says you're old. That's yeah. all it says. Don't so worry. this is my bar mitzvah picture. If you can see it, it's it's the one. It's a cute guy with the glasses. And he did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> His parents were so proud. All of his family and friends were there. <laughs> okay. What's going on here at this room? Well, uh, like all other Jewish communities, we've been forced to improvise and, and be quite creative and innovative over these last number of months, uh, taking everything online and trying to find ways to engage people. Uh, and actually, we're very grateful that, that on a weekly basis, Debbie is with us doing uh, yoga virtually for us on, face on Facebook Live as well. So uh, we're Glad to be able to tap into Debbie's wonderful talents to to engage our uh, congregants in that way. So lots of different things, whether it's services, classes, yoga. Uh, we even tried an online uh, a comedy night once. Uh, stand up is hard when you're <laughs> online. Just note to selves, right? That is not the easiest thing. Uh, we've done Shabbat across Sherith a couple of times where we had everyone come together and share, uh, essentially share a Shabbat service and dinner, where we sent people at the end into breakout rooms on Zoom, so they were able to have dinner with other members of the community. And we also had folks order from our caterer, Jeffrey Collinger, Spice of Life. Of course, catering business has been hit so hard by True. this uh, pandemic, so trying to also get some business for them and, and support them. So people ordered hundreds of meals. Uh, for Shabbat, he had told to, us about yeah, that. to be able to yeah. to really you know come together and even share the same meal, right? Let alone uh, be able to be with each other on Zoom. Um, and now, of course, we're gearing up for the High Holy Days, uh, and uh, you you may have heard of it. It's a it kind of keeps us a little busy around this time of year, and um, we are going to be uh, fully virtual essentially for the Holy Days. Though we will have the the services being filmed in real time, and we'll have uh, some. Uh, some pre-recorded content, as well as we're doing all kinds of things. We're going to have a video on demand library of uh, all kinds of short little teachings and reflections. We're doing a high holiday box that our congregants are getting in advance mm -hmm. of the holidays, uh, including, of course, the mock store, but other props for the for, uh, apples and honey and other props for the holiday season. Uh, people are submitting pictures, photos that we're going to be using in our video background. We created a whole, we're creating a whole new portal uh, for people to engage and be part of the service not this isn't just going to be any old zoom call this is going to be something much much different uh and uh and also we'll have live uh, shofar services uh in our parking lot and in the Levine academy parking lot where folks can you know drive through you know drive in and hear the sound of the shofar uh it, you know from their car windows so okay. lots of uh, we're out and we're doing a blessing board something else uh, where we people have a chance to share either written messages, photos, or videos, answering several different prompts about uh, how they're feeling about different aspects of this season and what they want to share with their fellow congregants. So we so. can hear the shofar live, which is really important to me because that's part of what we're supposed to hear. So you've figured out a way to make that happen. Yeah, it's we, we figured out a way to make that happen. That's the one of the various High Holy Day experiences. That's one that is very, is particularly powerful for so many folks. And, uh, and also, traditionally, we're supposed to hear the sound of the shofar directly, right. right? not amplified through a microphone or some other projection. So uh, it gives people a chance to be able to do that as well. Uh, but but it's, it's a, a, a kind of gathering, right? We, we crave, we're all craving gathering in, in, in whatever way is possible. So to be able to have those opportunities to hear those powerful 
moving evocative sounds, the, the wake up call, the alarm clock of the shofar, it's, uh, it should be a really nice opportunity. Well, can I mention one of my favorite things about Sheriff? Sure. Uh, you know, if you have an idea, particularly a creative idea, I've always found that Sheriff is so warm has open arms, and I'll never forget a group of us coming and saying, we'd like to have the biggest uh, practice, yoga practice, with Jewish people ever in Dallas, Texas. And Sherrod opened the doors, as they always do, as you always do, and we literally had 100 practitioners. Wow of yoga through a Jewish lens. That's that's what's probably as close to my heart as your bar mitzvah is as close to your heart about sharing. <laughs> yes, that's great. We love, we love to find opportunities for people to engage in so many different ways Jewishly and connecting with Jewish community. So glad that was said. That's been such a meaningful outlet for you. That, we were there teaching. with you. Oh yeah, well, we were there as Sheriff with the um, with Squirrel Hill with the, that horrible shooting. And uh, you led the way, having everyone at the synagogue. It was just, we were there with you. Yeah, this uh, community is about lots of different things. It's obviously about celebrating in some, some moments, uh, like the High Holy Days, but also coming together in really tough, difficult times and to support each other and, um, and to offer that kind of solidarity and strength. So you know, we're, we're glad to be able to be a part of that and to be able to be a, 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 an anchor for uh, this, uh, you know, just a, a, an important part of this Dallas Jewish community and bringing us together. It's been a lot. And Absolutely. Right? Yeah, I see the Texas Jewish Post right there on the table. I think it's a pretty special week. I was it wondering is. about that. This is a that. good advertisement. Sharon, wish Ray, there are no, you know, there are no royalties, no worries, but this is for you. I want to give you a, a shout out to Sharon, wish Ray, and the all, all staff at uh, TJP for. Uh, all the effort, energy they put in every week. And uh, this week, coincidentally, the week I was called to be on the Shabbos show, uh, I actually did a Devar Torah for the Parsha for Kitei Tse. So uh, it, nice timing. I know you guys had planned that, right? And thought, like, when can we get the rabbi? Oh, yes, when he's published, right? So uh, so the good news is in the, in the Parsha here, Kitei Tse, uh, I, there's, there are 74 mitzvot, 74 commandments. It's the the largest number of in any one single parsha in the Torah of the 613 wow. commandments that we typically associate with the Torah. Uh, and uh, it's a wide range of, of laws, all kinds of different things. But I highlighted two that I thought were interesting and, and really kind of connected to one another. Uh, one was the law that when you build a new home that you're supposed to build a, a parapet uh, around the roof. Uh, so God forbid somebody doesn't fall and a worker or someone who's stargazing doesn't fall off the roof and hurt themselves, right? And then our tradition goes on to add later that that means also if you've got a, a ditch in your yard or a hole or you should fence that in. I mean, basically anytime it's your property to look out for others and make sure they don't get hurt. And what I said in the Bar Torah was on some level that, that we could say that's a, a very, of course, we're doing it for moral reasons. Yeah, we're good moral people. We look out for others. But I could be cynical and I could say, you know what, the reason that you're putting the parapet up or fencing the hole is you don't want to get sued afterwards, right? Because God forbid they sue you and say you're, a, you're liable. So in that case, something's on the line for you, right? At least cynically. But what about a situation where the, your choice to look out for others isn't tied into your money, right? Or isn't tied to risk associated to you, right? And so I looked at another one of the, uh, the laws that's found in there, which is this idea of when uh, lost property, your neighbor loses an ox or a donkey or, a, or clothing or anything of value, you're supposed to go out of your way to return it to them. If it's an animal, you're supposed to take care of the animal in the meantime uh, while you're waiting around for them to come, which, by the way, can cost you money, right? Obviously, True. if you have to feed the animal, take care of it. Uh, let alone if you had to schlep something back somewhere to someone, right? But the traditions, our tradition says, that's our responsibility. So it speaks to even when it's not about protecting our own skin, perhaps, right, or being not being liable. It's about thinking about the other first. And how, if I were in that position, if I were the person who lost something, wouldn't I want someone to be sitting there saying, "Gosh, I, I feel terrible for that person. Let me see if I can help." 
right? Let, let's, I don't want to benefit at their expense. I want to make them whole again. Because that's, you know, that, that's, that's the right thing to do. And uh, there's a beautiful Hasidic teaching uh, from one of the disciples of the founder of Hasidism, the Baal Shem Tov, uh, which basically took the ox, lost ox and sheep as a metaphor and said, you know, um, that's really not just about animals. It's actually about human beings. Oftentimes we get lost, like we, we lose our way, we lose connection, uh, we experience loss, right? We struggle with all those different elements. And when that happens, it's nice to know that other people would be looking out for us and looking to find us and restore us. Or either, maybe we can't always restore to someone what they've lost, but we can help people renew and reconnect and move on from loss. And, and basically that particular teaching suggests that in order tied into the High Holidays, for us, we're, we, we think about the, se the season of Elul and the High Holiday period about how we we have to do a lot of introspection, right? We got to, how, what have I, how have I been doing the last year? What am I thinking about for the year ahead? How can I be that much better of a person? How can I change my, my actions? And when we do that, when we think first about someone else, right? And when I'm first thinking, how can I bring someone else back or he, understand where they are or the, what they've been going through? When we're able to do that, says this beautiful teaching, then we're really able to also tap into our own selves better, really be able to, uh, to get to our own core and say what's broken or what's lost or what needs fixing, even inside me, so that I can also find my way back, uh, to my, not only to myself, but to, to my commun Jewish community and to God. Uh, and it's a really beautiful teaching and gives us this thought of, instead of first looking at ourselves, if we start looking outwards and seeing what's going on in the world and around people around us, then that can really help bring some sharp inner focus to us as we do that kind of work of chuvav, return and repair. That's lovely. Thank Beautiful. You. Thank you. I don't want to explain it. Debbie? Um, let's see. Were you going to bring up Amalek? I probably was not going to bring up Amalek. I was going to bring up the Hala, but that's later. That's later. But but I, how can I not bring up Amalek? <laughs> uh, what, what's going on with Amalek? Why is he even involved here? So Amalek is towards the end of our, our Parsha this week, and uh, it's not the first time they're mentioned. They're also mentioned in Exodus when, we're, when we've been exiting from Egypt and we're in the wilderness and they're, they're hunting, uh, hunting down our the Israelite ancestors from, from the rear and attacking the, the weak and the, the vulnerable. And they're, therefore, they become essentially a perpetual enemy of Israel. And we're told at the end of this parsha that we should remember what they did to us and never forget to blot out their memory. So Amalek, according to our tradition, if we just extrapolate outside of the Torah and go down to our other books of the Bible, we eventually get to King Saul and uh, Agag, the Amalekite king. Uh, in, and uh, and their rivalry, and then we go forward generations to the story of Purim mm -hmm. in, in the book of Esther, and it turns out that according to the book of Esther, uh, we've got Mordechai as a descendant of Saul, and who did not finish off Amalek, and Haman is a descendant of Amalek, right? So therefore, we have the hint for an interesting custom that many of you are probably familiar with, which is on Purim, we shake a grogger. Right, we make lots of noise when we hear the name Haman. Right, so the one of the original roots for that custom is, is a custom that you probably haven't seen before, but ha still happens in some communities where they'll write on their shoe the the name Haman, and when they hear the name Haman in the Megillah, the Scroll of Esther, they will stomp their feet and try to wipe off the name Haman, blot out going back to the the Torah verse, blot out Haman's name, blot out Amalek's name. And so what we've just kind of adapted that custom, instead of the shoe and the writing, we just make noise, right? We eliminate, we blot out so we can't hear. What, Haman, what, what, right? I, I expected you to have a Brogger ready, but it's okay, right? right. You're supposed to write here the props, right? So, um, Metaphorically. That's right, metaphorically. We're shaking our Groggers now. We are eliminating the name of Haman. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, it's really about trying to remember the past, especially when, you know, people have treated us horribly, right, uh, to to always be able to, in some way, keep that with us uh, to help us learn from that uh, and, uh, and, and hopefully uh, hopefully be better off in the future in our encounters. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I didn't know about that. 
I'm thinking that you probably didn't know that there are fantastic prizes associated with being a guest on the Shabbos show. Stop it! I, this this has just been uh, announced to me right now in this moment. I had no idea. And it's true. I was going to come anyway. And we're going to help you keep a giant secret just with us, this community right here. I bet you you're too busy to bring Shabbos flowers home to Jennifer in all of the work that you're doing right now. You have now. just outed me in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> So, uh, congratulations. We Gabby. got your back. Thank you. We got your back. Thank you. Thank okay, you. You tell them the rest. I'm going to go get the holla. <laughs> okay. The second thing, and this is the most important thing, in my opinion. Oh. It's tequila. Hello. Now, it's not Baltimore, and it's not the, all everything famous over there, but in Texas, we drink tequila. Nice. Right? Right. And so, this isn't just tequila, but it's, it's uh, sponsored by the KMD. Okay. So, that's a Mexico version of the... Uh, Rabbinic Association, and so it stands for Hashrut Mag and David. And so this is to you. And Thank to you. Enjoy this at home. Thank you so much. Maybe I want the flowers and she wants the tequila. That's me. I mean, be. Oh, yeah, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, and of course, one last thing, Debbie. We have a check for your discretionary oh, fund. It's you so our much. practice prior to lighting thank the shop so candles, I as is that. so many people's practice. To do our sadaka. Thank you so Only much. Only this one, uh, I mean, just as much as any other, but perhaps one shade more, uh, just delights our hearts. So Thank you. Very Thank you so much. That. Appreciate that. So is there a holla or what? There's a holla. There's a holla. <laughs> Don't holla. Don't holla. <laughs> wow. That's going to be a It's one. promising. It's pretty, isn't it? It's, it's working. And then before we go, just by way of... A few deep breaths, just one tiny, two small verses, two small verses from Psalm 27, because I feel like when we're all together, this is how I feel about it, and this is what we did yesterday with Sheriff. This is the part that we focused on in our meditation and yoga. One thing have I sought from Adonai, how I long for it that I may live in the house of Adonai all the days of my life, that I may look upon the sweetness of Adonai and spend time in the palace, that you might hide me in your sukkah on a chaotic day, hide me in the hiding places of your tent, raise me high upon a rock. And I very much feel when we're with this community and with you, you and with you that we are having these moments in the palace and it's so meaningful that in Dallas Texas and beyond we have clergy willing to say yeah it's 99 degrees but I'll come in your backyard and do a Facebook live show so that we can connect with our congregants during this time of the virus and um, it's so meaningful, and we thank you so much. Well, it's it's my honor and pleasure, and really what Psalm 27, one of the pieces is talking about security and, and comfort and, and, and really trying to restore that to us, uh, to be able to dwell, know that we could dwell in God's house forever, right? What, ah, how, how nice would that feel, right? What, what, what would that mean to us, right? And so uh, for so many of us during these last number of months, it's been a struggle. Right? And, and looking for answers and looking for security and, and confidence about what's next and when are we going to get out of this uh, COVID hole and, uh, and, and when are we going to be restored right to that place of more tranquility and, and, and equilibrium and balance in our lives. And, and these words are hopeful words, right? They're, they're a season, this is about the season of Chuva and return, right? It's about coming back and, and renewal, right? And so... It's certainly my hope that this year is a year of uh, uplift, a year of good health for all of us, uh, a year of joy, lots of simcha, uh, lots and lots of simcha. We could use some extra this year, I think, to make up for 5780, and uh, and and re restoration uh, and reinforcement of community uh, and that I know has been so important to all of us, uh, even virtually now and hopefully leading back to our being able to gather once again in person, other than outside in our in backyards, uh, a few feet away from each other. So hopefully it'll be that kind of year, a year of, a year of blessing, a year of renewal, a year of healing, and a year of sweetness for all of us. Thank you.
Thank you, Rabbi Sunshine. Thank you, Rabbi Sunshine. We really enjoyed getting to know you on our mission to Israel. Yes. The Federation. Yes, that was our first. We had some chance to run around Israel together for a couple of weeks. It was fantastic. Right? So it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was really a joy for me to also to get to know you then. And well, spend some time that's what with you. we're praying for and thinking about also is a chance to do things like that and spend time with you and spend time with our friends and family in, in ways that don't have us six feet apart necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Debbie, this has been fun. This has been fun. And thank you for your spiritual guidance. It sure. makes a difference in that today's topsy turvy world. Absolutely. You know, you were going to ask me one question, one fun question, which we talked about. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So um, we got to give the viewers some, some totally random oh, fun oh, facts. Right? I'm, 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 are you a hockey fan at all? As it happens, Barry, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, funny that you mention it. I, I happen to be a Washington Capitals fan. Well, they um, won the Stanley Cup once, they, I think. They did win exactly once. And, well, do you any memories of that game? Because you probably didn't know much about it. You had to probably watch on TV. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, it was two years ago in 2018, and uh, I've been a huge Caps fan my whole life, uh, which is basically the entirety of the existence of the Washington Capitals franchise. And I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Las Vegas for the clinching game and see the game when the Caps won the Stanley Cup. Uh, and uh, it was absolutely amazing, right? There's, uh, for the sports fans here uh, watching, and, and probably for anybody, right, it's to, to root for something so uh, so powerfully and emotionally for, for 44 years and to be all of a sudden like, oh, my God, they just did that. <laughs> I was we were, I recorded the, the, the Stanley Cup present ceremony, and uh, there was someone near me that was like, oh, my God, can you believe this? This is real. This is, Like, they're actually saying that out loud in my video. I'm like, you know, like, yeah, it's real. It was fun. And meanwhile, this year, they, in five games, they, they quietly left the playoffs while the, the Stars continued to steamroll uh, other teams. So uh, one year at a time, right? So thank you, thank you for asking. But, yes, I'm a big, big Caps fan. Yeah. Well, good. Um, you, you always have the Orioles. I, who, by the way, have a better record than the Rangers right now. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, 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 I'm just saying. Oh, oh, oh that was it's, an arrow on the know, heart. It's, still, oh, it's a fact. It's a fact. We can look it up in the, in the uh, standings right now. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, that's fun. Well, I'm sure the kids like it. I know Jennifer likes it, and I just think it's great. So, Debbie? Yes, Barry? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat Thanks shalom. Thanks for tuning in with us today. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, you guys. We really appreciate you. Oh, so many nice folks on here. Dan Prescott, hi. Scott Hart, hi. Taylor, hi. Hillary and Esther. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.